Welcome back to the Mind Body Project. Thanks for taking a little time to join me today. I'm excited about my guest. My guest um, is a client and a friend, a client for the last 13 years. 13 years, a I think. Time. Yeah, a long time. Um, and a friend for just as long. Yeah. Uh, Deb Murdoch. Thank you, Deb, for joining me today on the, on the show. Uh, it's, it's, um, we talked a few weeks ago. Uh, you had asked me to listen to a testimony that you were giving um, to uh, one of the groups you're in, and you wanted me to kind of, and you're pretty nervous about it because it was a challenge, and you're going to be live with hundreds of people. 500 people watching. And way, way out of your comfort zone. Yes. Um, as we've been together uh, for the last 13 years, uh, training, might be 14. I think it's 14. Um, but you've stepped out and done a lot of things. Yes. through the years yes. um, through doing a half marathon to doing the um, MS 150 yes. uh, which is a 150 mile bike race yes. ride I mean just all sorts of different things a 5k it all started with a 5k and then a half marathon all sorts of different things yeah and all the times you were times that you challenged me to step outside my comfort zone and to do something different mm -hmm. so that was the beauty of all of this is you were kind of the impetus for me to start riding bikes from doing spin class I mean, we've, you have been the one that has said, what, hey, why don't you get a bike? Hey, why don't you do this? <laughs> and it's always been something that's made me grow a little bit. So, mm -hmm. And, and all I'm those grateful. things are scary. They're very scary. Anytime you step yeah. outside your comfort zone, is scary. Absolutely. And so how this has progressed, when we talked a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. you had it all, your story all typed out, your testimony, yep. and now all you have is a little bitty card um, mm -hmm. that you're going to go by. So, but really... Um, I just wanted to share w with everybody th uh, the power of, of change of food um, and, and, and being a nurse for 30 plus years. Yes. Um, now retired. Yes. Um, how your view has changed on medicine um, and food and how that has morphed from um, medicine being the cure-all to now really food being the cure-all. Right. And, 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 and lifestyle change. Yes. Yes. and lifestyle change yes and through your story a powerful um indication of what food can do right um for us right um in different ways so right. so i want you to kind of take us back to um kind of how all this journey started because it's been over a year is that it's, it's been almost almost two. almost two years yeah july will be two years since everything started so yeah that's right so so take us back to that starting point a couple years ago um, kind of what brought you to the point? Why are we uh, sitting here talking today? Okay. The first thing I want to say is that this really kind of started, this is a Rick, kind of a Rick and Deb story. So we've been, people in town know us and they know we, we've been married for 47 years. We don't have kids. We've grown up together. It's always been just us. And, um, and we're best friends. As cliche as that is, we're really best friends. And so we moved up here, we bought property up here um, almost, we've been up here almost 16 years now. So we bought property up here and we built our house because we wanted to get out of the city. And um, we built our home that we knew would be our retirement home. And we traveled back and forth to Bedford. We did a 75 mile each way commute for many years, for 12 years before we finally retired in December of 2019. And we were really looking forward to life in small town America. You know, that we could, uh, we have a lot of friends. We have wonderful neighbors. And I love this community. This, I didn't grow up here, but boy, do I love being here. And you couldn't bomb me out of here because mm -hmm. I love it so, so much. So we retired and thought, this is great. We can travel we can finally be in our home and, and enjoy that piece of our lives. And so we were very excited at the prospect of that. But on July the 5th of 2021, Rick and I had been out mowing. We were out on two different mowers. You know, you got to mow. With, we have to have two mm -hmm. to get it all done. It hurts. Right. So um, I, we were out mowing. but And I kept watching him and thinking, wow, he just does not look right. There's just something wrong. So um, when we finished, we were cleaning everything up and putting, putting things away. And I said, you don't feel well, do you? And he said, no, I really don't. And um, he said, my chest kind of hurts and I feel a little short of breath. And uh, you said, I've been a nurse, uh, hospital-based RN for thir over 30 years. 
and I did my last 15 in cardiac nursing. So when I see somebody, his color was terrible, he was really gray looking, and he just looked awful. So when I see somebody looking like that, we are on the way to the emergency room, which is exactly what we did. So we went to Decatur to the ER. Which is about 30 minutes. 30 minutes away. And um, they took him right in, of course. And I, I, we looked at his EKG looked good. All of his initial lab work looked good. Everything looked okay. And I just figured he had a little bout of angina. So um, the doctor saw him and well, it, the, it just so happens, and God moves in the most mysterious ways with things like this, but uh, it just so happened that the cardiologist on call was in the ER seeing another patient, or else he probably would not even come in to see him. Mm -hmm. But um, So he came and saw him and examined him, and he said, everything looks good, all your numbers are good, everything looks okay, your EKG looks fine, So, but there's just something about you that I don't like, and I want, to, I want to keep you overnight just to keep an eye on you, just to make sure everything's okay. And so we agreed to that. I wasn't, we weren't expecting it, but that's mm -hmm. what we agreed to. And that act, just that action of that doctor saved Rick's life. Because if they had sent him home, he probably would not have survived. Uh, it turns out he got in trouble the next day, and it turns out that he had a massive pulmonary embolism. And I'm going to tell you, those are three words you never want to hear together. So uh, they, he, he got in trouble the next morning. He didn't feel well, dropped his oxygen saturations, and we knew then what it was. So, um, and for people who don't know, your pulmonary artery takes blood from your heart to your lungs, and he had a huge clot in that artery at, that went out into both of his lungs, and there was so much pressure, back pressure from his heart trying to pump against that big clot that the right side of his heart was enlarged. So if you had waited that if you had waited till the next day for him to go, if he had decompensated like that at home, he might not have made it back to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And that's what all the doctors told us. Mm -hmm. They said he should never have survived that. Mm -hmm. And the action of that doctor to keep him, keeping him there overnight was the thing that saved him. So they said we're going to take him emergently to the cath lab and we're going to do this procedure and I, I was freaked out. It everything happened so quickly. And um, as, as they rolled him by, they rolled him by me on a gurney because they got him ready quickly and to take him to the cath lab. As they rolled him by me and I kissed him goodbye, I, that is probably one of the scariest moments in my life because I have seen people in big trouble and he, and he looked like that. Mm -hmm. And I just thought I was never going to see him again. When they rolled him into that cath lab, I just... I thought that was it for us, mm -hmm. and um, because I did not know that doctor, I did not know the nurses in the cath lab, how skilled nurses they were, and I didn't know the procedure that they were doing. And so when they took him away to do this, I just thought that was it. I, I thought I'd lost him. That was the last I really, time. I mean, I really did. I can tell it now without crying, mm -hmm. but boy, I, it just, that alters your life. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, it, probably an hour later, the doctor came out and he said that they were successful to break up the clot. They use wires with ultrasound and they, a clot-busting drug that they infuse, so they break the clot up and dissolve it. And then they left two wires in, one in each lung, and they infused this clot-busting drug and used ultrasound overnight. Mm -hmm. um, so he was in the ICU for a couple of days. And he looked so much better when all that was over with because his heart was working mm -hmm. and he was getting oxygen again. So um, he was in the ICU a couple days uh, in the hospital for probably a total of four or five, and then he came home. And honestly, Aaron, I think we were in such shock the whole time we were in the hospital because you just never expect anything like that to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't walked that walk where you look death in the eye with somebody that you love, um, you just, it just changes you. It really does change you. I think when we finally got to the point that we could, we kind of figured out how close he came, because I'm not kidding you, every doctor that came in to see him in the hospital said, you should not be here. There is no way you should have survived that, because that thing was so huge. Mm -hmm. So um, you just decide then what's important in your life and what's not.
you know. Um, when we left the hospital, I remember thinking, I just had this intuitive thought that uh, keto would save him. Keto would save him. But I didn't know what that was really. And I did a little research when we left the hospital, but we were so busy seeing doctors. He had to go to specialists to figure out why he had this massive blood clot that started in his leg and um, what caused him to form blood clots. And of course, they never found anything. Mm -hmm. But I knew intuitively somewhere that it was inflammation of his vessels, that reaction that caused that, but I didn't know what to do about it. And, and at this time, I mean, you both still eat healthily, you eat good, you, you exercise, it, you know, you do all the, the things. Well, you think you do, but yeah. you know, there's always that other stuff. That, mm -hmm. So it's not always all healthy, but mm -hmm. you, do, you think you're doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, and, you would never and, say that, you'd, you'd say, I'm healthy. Yeah, and I, do I would say things. I'm healthy, mm -hmm. and Rick's pretty healthy, mm -hmm. and so, you know, we just, we motored along. I, I did seek out some medical advice to help us with dietary changes, and, uh, and the first words out, when I said, I really feel like keto is the way for us to go, immediately I get, keto's dangerous, um, it'll destroy your kidneys, uh, intermittent fasting is not good for you. You really should eat every two or three hours. And so, I mean, we tried to follow standard advice, which I kind of knew wasn't the right thing, but it was the only thing that we could do at the time. Mm -hmm. So we were following advice of medical professionals to help us make our decisions about how we ate. And um, so we rolled along in January of 2022. Uh, all of, it, it seemed like it happened overnight. All of a sudden, Rick looks like he's an 85-year-old guy, and um, he can barely walk, and uh, he's having hard trouble, hard time getting out of in and out of a chair. And it, he was he had an inflammatory arthritis. His knees hurt, his hips, his shoulders. He had a, a swollen wrist, and he could hardly move. He could barely get in and out of his truck. And I thought, what in the world? How did my how did my husband turn into this 85 year old guy? And so I and I thought again, this is all inflammatory, and keto is the thing that would save him. So off we go now to a rheumatologist, and I just was thinking, I just we are headed down a terrible path. We're barely six months out of that event that he had that almost took his life mm -hmm. and now here we go down this other thing and he's got an inflammatory process going on and why mm -hmm. and so of course we go to the rheumatologist and they start him on prednisone which is a horrible drug i mean not for long term and so I mean, that's just not something you want to take for a long time. But it was the only thing that gave him any relief. Mm -hmm. He was able to move again. He felt better. He didn't have all that pain. And there are times in your life you make decisions to do things you may not necessarily want to do, like prednisone, and you decide quality of life is more important mm -hmm. while you're searching for something else. Mm -hmm. So I started to do some research on keto, but again, it just seemed so overwhelming because it's a huge lifestyle change, the way you eat. And there's so much data out there about... There and is, and a lot of conflicting data out there. And you certainly don't talk to the medical profession about it because they will all tell you the standard American diet is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So I started to do some research, and then my great awakening came. I did a, a four-day detox yoga retreat. Um, and they called it Heart of the Warrior, which is really a good name for it. So I did a four-day yoga retreat. And if you could, it, it is so astounding to me the way the universe and God moves things for you to put you in the right place because a lot of things had to happen for me to show up at that retreat. I'd already decided I wasn't going to go. Because, again, that's way out of your comfort zone. Yes. To be is. with other ladies, bunking with another other ladies, being there for four days. Yeah. Uh, it took some talking in. Yes, and I, it, Lori that runs the Ponderosa and uh, Colleen talked me into doing this. Mm -hmm. So I did. I went to the yoga retreat, and I knew Colleen from my classes, but I did not know that she had had a lot of health challenges, and she was well-versed in keto and low-carb and intermittent fasting, and she had done all of those things to regain her own health. Mm -hmm. So that 
I felt, I mean, the universe knew that I needed to be there and that she was going to be my resource. So um, I pummeled her with questions for four days because I knew that she knew what I needed to know. Mm -hmm. So um, I hammered her with questions for four days. And when we were through with the retreat, and I'll tell you, while I was at the retreat, I realized I wasn't such a healthy lady anyway, too. Because there were times during the retreat you didn't feel real great either. I felt horrible during that retreat. We were eating great food, and I felt terrible. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I needed some help, too. I was bloated and puffy and overweight, and I just knew that I needed some help, too. So uh, everybody knows I don't ask people for help very often, but I asked her to help us, and she agreed, and uh, she taught us how to Buy, how to read labels and buy food and she shopped with us mm -hmm. and we cleaned out our pantry and the refrigerator um, and then she started to give us some resources to start to look at reliable resources mm -hmm. so the first thing she suggested was that re we read a book by Dr. Annette Bosworth um, it's called uh, Any Way You Can and it's a story she's a physician it's a story about um, her mother's cancer journey and how Dr. Bosworth from a patient, found out about keto, and did her own investigation and put her mother on a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting, um, and her mother beat cancer. So I told Rick, I'm not doing this by myself. You're mm -hmm. going to be engaged in this process. I'm not going to run the program. That it, This has to be for both of us to do, and that you have to be educated in the process too. So we read the book, and that was a really great jumping off place for us, because from that we, we found other resources, uh, Dr. Mindy Pels, Ken Berry, Dr. Ken Berry, uh, they all have YouTube channels, and we found a guy named Ben Azadi, who runs a keto camp academy, he calls it. Mm -hmm. You There's right. a bug, yes. <laughs> Riley, what? He's going crazy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so we found good, reliable resources, and we started to change our lives. I bought a meter so we could check our blood sugars and our ketones. We did all of those things. And, um, and, and I'll tell you, we didn't do it all right, and it wasn't always easy. But we, we, we did it. We both had keto flu. You hear about keto flu all the time. Keto flu is carbohydrate withdrawal. If you're used to eating 300 grams of carbs every day and you cut down to 50, you do not feel well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both experienced that. But, uh, and we did, weren't real sure what we were doing, but I know now how to manage that. Hopefully we never have to do that again. Because it's been a process over the... It has been a huge process. It's been an educational process. But through all of that, we both, um, we went to see Rick's doctor. I, first of all, we felt so much better. Okay, we didn't have that hangover from too many carbs. We had a lot more energy. We weren't sleeping. I, I took a nap every single day. I'm the world's greatest power napper. Mm -hmm. But I slept every afternoon, and I didn't need that nap anymore. We weren't hungry all the time. We didn't get hangry anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we knew that we felt so much better. And, and, and through the, the research, because you and Rick are both great researchers. Yes. You don't just jump into anything. Yes. As I like to say, willy-nilly. Yes. You, you actually you knew what you were getting. And you, you didn't know that. You had researched it prior to. There's way more once you got into it, but there is way more. And, and you and Rick, and there's different types of keto, clean keto, dirty keto. Um, you and Rick went the clean keto way, um, which is healthier foods. It's not... We um, do mostly organic, mm -hmm. grass-fed, grass-finished when, when we can get it. Um, but we are doing whole, real food. Because there's all kinds of keto processed foods. There's keto garbage out there and that's one of the greatest things about learning to read labels. Um, I, I'll put a plug in for a guy named uh, Bobby Parrish who has a YouTube channel called Flav City and uh, he, do, he shops and uh, he teaches you how to read labels so you can find like all the hidden stuff in food that you don't really want, need to be eating. That's mm -hmm. inflammatory, mm -hmm. you know, because most everything that's fat free is loaded with sugar. There's something there. Yeah. So we did a few months of it, and then um, 
Rick tried to taper his prednisone. Now, he started prednisone in January. By October, we started keto, and I joined keto camp, and uh, in, we started keto in September of 22, and then I joined keto camp in October of 22. So we And, and keto camp is a group that you have found? It's a group that I um, pay a monthly fee, but I get coaching, and there's, I mean, there's a ton of information in their academy, uh, videos, and it's, it's, a, it's an educational process, and there's a lot of information. And a great there. support system, because yes. th that, that those in it are working on getting into keto, have made it a lifestyle, right. have all kinds of resources, and, and right. just a great support group and network well, we of have, we information have, and people. We have meetings. We do online meetings with the coaches. Um, we, we, do, we have like a, a mindset group that meets, uh, we meet twice a week. So you can come or not, but you know, you gotta be a joyful participant in the process if you're mm -hmm. gonna learn anything from it. Cause you and, didn't just join the camp, you actually are participant. I am a joyful participant. Is what makes the difference. Yes. Everybody can say, well, I signed up for coaching, but I'm not participating in the groups and the, the masterminds and the coffee breaks and all those kinds of but things. Though, but th that is the value of that. And I have never been somebody to join groups. I don't really like that. And uh, I think I can do everything on my own, but this process really requires, I think that you have to have a support network. Because mm -hmm. initially, you float through pretty good, but we're almost nine months down the road now, almost 10. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we have stuck with it, and it's from the support of the group. So, uh, so he, Rick had been on prednisone. We tried to taper it in October, and he flared up again. Because what they do is start you on a high dose and gradually taper you every month. You go in and you taper your dose, and you get your uh, inflammatory markers checked. And so he was taper. He had started to taper, but he got to a certain point, and he flared up again. His hands swelled. He was having pain again. And we figured out that dairy was uh, a an inflammatory factor for him. Dairy was very inflammatory for him. And so we took him off dairy, because we were doing raw dairy. Mm -hmm. We were doing raw cream and raw cheese, but um, so, and yogurt. And so we cut dairy, totally cut dairy out of his diet. And he just got, a, he's off prednisone now. And his inflammatory markers are all normal. Mm -hmm. And we saw his PCP. So within 10 months. Yeah. He's off. He's off. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was on it for over a year, uh -huh. but ten, nine or ten months of keto, and, keto. and he and he's off. He's off of his prednisone, mm -hmm. and he's not having any problems. And his inflammatory markers are normal. We saw our PCP in December, and he got all his lab work done. And his PCP walked in because we've both lost quite a bit of weight from this. Mm -hmm. But his PCP walked in, and we per, first of all, I've known him forever. He's been taking care of Rick for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And when he walked in, he said, "Holy cow! Look at you guys! And uh, what are you doing?" And we told him we were doing low carb. And um, he and, and it's important to note too that. You and Rick aren't in your 20s or 30s. No, Rick's almost You're, 70, and I'm 66. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, lost a substantial amount of weight. Yeah. Um, from it, but going into it, that wasn't the primary goal. The that primary was the goal to get Rick feeling better, get him off the. Our primary medication. goal was never ever weight loss. Mm -hmm. Never. It was to regain our health. Mm -hmm. And his doctor said to us, if all of my patients took charge of their health the way that you two have, nobody would need me. Mm -hmm. And he told us he had had a diabetic patient in that morning who wanted to get off some of his medicines, but he gained 20 pounds. So when you reduce inflammation in your body, you're going to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, we, I mean, he's off, so he's off prednisone. When we first started uh, this when we first started, he had had some lab work done, and his blood sugar was starting to creep up. And I don't, most people know what your A1C, because that's a marker of like what your blood sugar's been doing for the last three months. Mm -hmm. And um, his A1C was 5.9 when we started, and at 6.5, you're considered type 2 diabetic. So we got his uh, his A1C's down to to five now, which is really good. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we've been able to see that progress, but the, the 
benefit that you get, your sense of well-being, how you feel, your energy level, your mental clarity, you know, all of those things. Plus, now he's weaning off of his medicines. He feels so much better. And I feel like we are empowered people. We have taken control of our health, and we did it to get healthy, not to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the weight loss has been a nice side benefit, but I would do this all over again to feel the way that we both feel right now. And, you know, we've done every diet known to mankind. You had a challenge here one time, and I was in here doing three hours mm -hmm. of cardio and, uh, you know, keeping okay. track of my food, all that stuff. And I lost weight, but I put it all right back on again. Mm -hmm. And this is a total lifestyle change. You have to learn how to eat. You have to learn healthy carbs. You have to know what, what, work, what is going to... Uh, what drives your blood sugar up. So um, you have to learn this, and it is an education. And just when I think I've learned so much, then there's even more, because I like to read the research. I follow people that can show the research that I can go read the research myself mm -hmm. to see what, what we're doing and why, because I am never going to blindly follow anybody who tells me anything without checking it myself, and I'm never gonna allow a doctor to tell me again what I have to do unless I've hacked my arm off, and mm -hmm. then you know we'll have that discussion, I guess. But I just never want somebody to manage my day-to-day -day health by giving me a pill or an injection or a whatever it is, a potion. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want that. I want us to be in charge of our health care and make our own decisions about the ways that we do things. Mm -hmm. And I have a community that supports us. I have lots of other resources that I use. And that's what's important to us. Because when you do something like this, it's just like everything else that's important to you in your life. Uh, what is your why? Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. And my why was that I wanted to have a healthy retirement with the man I love. And we both had to get healthy for that, but we really had to work to get him where he was out of that inflammatory process. Mm -hmm. And I knew intuitively the way to, that would work, but it took a little while to find the resources. And now we're really kind of off and running and helping some other people too by mm -hmm. doing a testimonial during the last challenge that Keto Camp did um, because it's important to us. And see, now I have to vote. <laughs> But it, and it's important to us. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like you said, when you're doing all those hours of cardio, when I had that challenge, you're logging food. And you've told me for years, I hate logging food. I hate it. I, and through this whole process of keto, did you ever log food? I did. Okay, so I did this. I, there's a, an app you can download called Chronometer to keep track of your carbs. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, I kind of did that. But... Um, I don't like to do stuff like that. So I, once I had kind of a general idea of what I could and could, should, shouldn't, shouldn't, mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't do, um, especially I had a machine, I could check my blood sugar, I could check my ketones. We started off with pea strips to see mm -hmm. if you were in ketosis. Um, but once I could do that, um, I really didn't. And I can't even, I'm a geek about numbers. I will geek out over checking my ketones and my blood sugar and stuff. So I have even, now that I'm this far into it, I don't, I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I can tell, and the basis of this program that I'm doing, and a lot of them, is that you stay in ketosis for like four months. Um, and you do intermittent fasting as part of that. And our, I do a 24-hour fast once a week. But we, you do intermittent fasting as a piece of that. But it's important to flex out a day and eat more carbs, not garbage, mm -hmm. not cupcakes. Sorry, Angie, but not cupcakes. <laughs> but, so, but you don't eat junk. You mm -hmm. eat healthy carbs and up your carb intake so that your body is burning sugar too. Because the point of keto is when you go into ketosis, you teach your body to burn fat as fuel. Mm -hmm. And then when you flex out to go back to burning glucose, they call it metabolic flexibility. You can burn both for energy. So, you know, that's an important piece of it. But I can, I can go totally geek on my numbers. You know, I have peop people in the academy and all of these groups are wearing aura rings so they can track their sleep. And, uh, and 
if I start doing that, I'll be a crazy person. Mm -hmm. I'm already way ahead in that department, and I don't need any mm -hmm. help. So I can't, I can can't do that. But now I can tell on the, I can tell if I'm in ketosis because I'm not hungry. And because you did that initially in the beginning of doing the the test, right? Blood sugar, ketones. So you, now you know kind of how that feels when I'm in, when I'm right on. Right, and when I I'm and doing. I know when I'm out mm -hmm. because I will crave like snack time things mm -hmm. when because when I up my carbs because I do usually less than 30 grams of carbs they call it ketovore it's kind of carnivore and keto uh -huh. so but I we pretty much do like less than 20 or 30 because we both feel better that way because mm -hmm. we've played around with it and um, and we both feel better that way and when you talk about lifestyle you haven't I mean you've still lived life since you've been on keto yeah. you've been gone on a few trips you've yeah. been gone for weeks at a time yeah um you made arrangements to have certain groceries delivered to where you're going yep you took food um so i think that's important because that's when it shows it's a lifestyle because yeah. so many people say well i'm going on a trip or i'm going on a vacation so i can't do it yeah but yeah. but a lifestyle and when your why is so important you're going to make the effort to make all that still happen. Right, and when I, I got, my family's in Atlanta, um, I, in March, my stepdad is 82, had to have bypass surgery, because he's diabetic, and he hasn't taken care of himself, and he hasn't managed his blood sugars well. So he's 82 years old now, and he had multi-vessel heart disease, so he had to have a bypass. He's got kidney disease from his diabetes, and so, but because he's 82, having a bypass, my mother's 85, I'm retired. Um, I went and lived with him for almost a month to get him through his surgery and home and stable. And then I came back home. So I was there almost a month. And I sent, I ordered my Thrive Market box and had it delivered to my mom's house. And when I got to Atlanta, I went to Costco and I buy all the things that I eat mm -hmm. because I cook like I eat at home when I'm there. And I don't let anybody, if they want to have turkey and dressing or my mom bakes a cake, mm -hmm. uh, they can have that and I, I eat what I eat. But they've learned to eat the way that I do. Mm -hmm. But I have my stuff sent there. When uh, Dean came home from the hospital, he told me he'd been doing low carb, but I watched him and I said, those fudge sickles that you're eating are not low carb <laughs> mm -hmm. and you're snacking all day long, which keeps your blood sugar and your insulin level up all the time, which is not good for you. So I said, I'm going to teach you how to do this. Mm -hmm. And then what you do when I leave is up to you. Mm -hmm. So, and he's managed pretty well since I left. Mm -hmm. His numbers are much better. But I, so I send my stuff ahead of time. I shop when I get there. I have the things available. If I go see my friends, they're like, well, we don't know what to fix for you. I'll say meat and a vegetable mm -hmm. and I'm good, you know, or don't worry about me. I will fix my food. It's mm -hmm. fine. But if they do meat and a vegetable, I'm great. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do that. Meat and a salad. And I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. So you, you just, you have to make a commitment to it and you have to understand that this is something that you're probably going to, I mean, we're going to do this the rest of our lives. And I do not anticipate, God willing, that we put all that weight back on again and go back to where we were because we know how we feel right now. Mm -hmm. And we've got the support of a group. We have great resources. And, um, and that's what's important to us. Mm -hmm. That's what's important to us is that we be healthy and that we have you know, we have good health for as long as we're around because I don't want to be, I, God bless my mother and I love her dearly, but she's not very active and I don't want to be that. Mm -hmm. I've always told you I want to be riding the hotter than hell when I'm 80 years old mm -hmm. and um, I'm still out, I ride bike bikes with my friends we ride the service roads I'm not doing a lot of events mm -hmm. we're not doing the number of miles that we did but it's important to me to be out moving I do yoga I come here and lift weights a couple of days a week so I don't I'm not spending three hours a day in here mm -hmm. but I'm doing things that are important to me mm -hmm. and it's important to me to be healthy and in, into my old age and to be mobile i don't want to fall and so yoga is really great for me for that for balance and you and i do a lot of things mm -hmm. in here as part of my training to maintain my balance so those are the things that are important to me mm -hmm. you know i that's what i want for my life and that's what i want for our life moving forward and rick's been really good he does a lot of research he watches lots of youtubes mm -hmm. 
Um, we just, they had a big keto convention. It's probably one of the biggest ones they have in the United States. They have it in Austin every year. And we just got back from KetoCon. And all the, all the authors, I dragged all my books and got all my books signed by the mm -hmm. authors. They did some great, um, they had great workshops. They had killer speakers, lots of product. You know, there's a lot of keto garbage out there too, but um, we sat in on a um, panel discussion about um, regenerative farming, mm -hmm. like what goes into your food, and uh, that was really interesting to me. So, you know, I'm interested in a lot of things, but the most important thing to me is that we be healthy in, into our old age and, um, and, and be mobile mm -hmm. and be smart about what we're doing and be empowered as we deal with medical professional people mm -hmm. you know that i don't want anybody to ever tell me i have to take a pill because to to survive uh, i want to be able to make that choice mm -hmm. like we had to make with prednisone for rick you know i want to be able to make that choice but only after i've done the appropriate amount of research mm -hmm. and i feel comfortable with what it is i'm doing because honestly you know that whole placebo effect thing uh -huh. is really true if you believe something's going to help you by golly it will because mm -hmm. your mind's pretty damn powerful mm -hmm. so um if you believe that that's going to work for you it really will but and we know this is working for us mm -hmm. and we know that we are intelligent human beings and that we can do research ourselves uh, instead of just um, taking whatever uh, is recommended for us to do. We mm -hmm. just won't ever do that. Be because like you said, th what was recommended was a standard American diet. Yep. Um, which for some it may work great. Yep. But it's taking you and Rick took your lifestyle, your lives into your own hands and said, you know, the, this medicine we take might help for the short term, but what can we do for the long term? And I think it's important for each individual to say, that may listen to this and say, well, I'm going to do that because she did it. Mm -hmm. But I think the important takeaway is research what works for you because that's what's going to, what can you live with? For, like you have found something that you can live with for the rest of your life. You can go on trips, you can go on vacation, go out to friends. Um, you can exercise, you can, and it reduces inflammation. It helps get off medication. But that's what works for you and Rick and which we have to spend the time to research. Well, and, and, and be educated and realize that it's, uh, you know, I'm going to try this, and you found out the perfect uh, carbs for, for you, perfect intermittent fasting, what all that works, um, but it's been a long process, and it's not easy. It takes trial and error. It's not, it's not going to tell you what exactly you need in a book. You've right. had to read, compile all this information and pick, cherry pick all the stuff that is applicable to you mm -hmm. and compile your own data for you. Right. And I think it's important for people to know when you when a doctor gives you a pill, they're giving you a pill for a symptom. Nobody has time to look for the root cause of all of that. Like I knew that Rick's root cause was in his in, it's that your endothelium is inside of your blood vessels. When you have inflammation there, it's reactive and it's going to cause blood clots and it's going to cause a stroke or a heart attack or a pulmonary embolism, mm -hmm. you know? So a pill, while you might need that for the short term, you need to look at the deeper root cause of what's wrong with you. Not, I'm taking this pill for my blood pressure. Okay, so take the pill to get your blood pressure down from whatever this dangerous level is. Mm -hmm. Take that pill while you figure out what's causing all this. Are my triglycerides too high? You know, is my HDL too low? Um, look at look at the things that could, do I have too much stress in my life? Am I eating too much sugar? Could my, and that's why my triglycerides are so high. Mm -hmm. You know, look at look at a root cause. Don't just say, oh, you know, I uh, I think the thing that drives me the craziest is diabetic people who will eat crap food. You know, they'll go eat cake and ice cream and then give themselves more insulin to cover that. Mm -hmm. You're treating a symptom. You're not treating the root cause of your disease. Mm -hmm. And that requires a little bit of investigation, uh, a little bit of work. And, um, and then you have to take the time to figure out what works for you, just the way we have. We found out lower carbs better for us. We found out on flex days the things that we can eat mm -hmm. um, and, and what, you know, what works best for us. And it, it takes time and it takes a little bit of effort. And it always will come back to how strong is your why. 
Mm -hmm. You know, if it's strong enough, not just I want to lose 30 pounds, because if that was my why, I would have been done with this thing before Christmas, mm -hmm. you know, but that's not my why. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you have to understand what you're dealing with and make an appropriate plan and then seek out resources. I just feel like, you know, people are led into your path. Uh, to give you information sometimes, just like Colleen was, and she's become a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to take advantage of those opportunities when they show up mm -hmm. and then use the information that you get wisely. And, and, and as we've talked about before, not be a knowledge junkie, where you get all this, you don't do anything with it. You just get it, get it. You know a lot, you can spew a lot, but you don't put an application. A knowledge junkie is you have all this knowledge, but you do nothing with it. Well, and the knowledge has way more power when you are doing something with mm -hmm. it because then it's not just something you read in a book. It's something that you experience yourself mm -hmm. and you know that it works mm -hmm. or you know that for you that's not the right thing. This lifestyle is not for everybody and I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. But I think that if we would just reduce our dependence on prepackaged food that's loaded with sugar, you know, because you know as well as I do what an addiction sugar is. Mm -hmm. It lights up that place in your brain like heroin does. And, uh, and the food manufacturers know it. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you eat something out of a package that's loaded with sugar, or you eat a lot of sugar, um, you are lighting up that place in your brain, and that's why you need it again. It, it's really like a, it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's a tough thing to break. It's a tough thing to break. I've had, uh, I had a friend that came to stay with me for a little while, and she said, I'm going to eat like you do. And I said, you might get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You might get in trouble. If you lower your carbs too fast, you aren't going to feel well. And that started to happen to her. Mm -hmm. You know, she lowered her carbs too fast because she was eating like we do, and I had to add carbs. I Actually, she started to get in trouble, and I had... She's a Mountain Dew junkie. <laughs> I gave her a Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. I bought her a Mountain Dew, made her drink it. Mm -hmm. drink part of it and it not kicked her right out of what she, what was happening mm -hmm. so it, feel a little better yeah so it i mean it's not a comfortable process unless you make the proper you make the proper adjustments mm -hmm. and you do things slowly you can't mm -hmm. just jump we jumped in we paid the price and that's what happens to a lot of people and then they say well i can't do that because, i'm not sticking with it no because it made me sick mm -hmm. you know and they don't understand the thing that made them sick was that carbohydrate withdrawal mm -hmm. and they're not patient enough to go through the process of the withdrawal um, because it really is an addiction and manufacturers know that um, they know we're going to keep coming back for more because we want that drug um, and we have to eat it's, it's the hardest thing because we can't walk away from a cigarette we can't walk away from an alcoholic drink we can't walk away from food yeah. we have to keep coming back but we have to be an educated consumer right and it's okay to i think and i think you would agree when the doctors say something ask why investigate mm -hmm. you know be a participate in your health right right and and say what are the side effects of this medication mm -hmm. and but, i'm already taking five others what's the side effects of all of them together yeah but and you know that's another big problem too is that people see so many specialists and they're getting prescriptions from everybody polypharmacy is a big dog deal but they're they don't know what's what's working with what mm -hmm. and the doctors don't speak to one another so they have no clue what you're taking they might take a cursory glance over your drug list mm -hmm. but um you know they don't pay attention to those things classic example i was talking to my stepdad the other day and he'd gone in for his lab work and um he's been on a statin since he had this bypass surgery done and i was i and they gave me access to their records so I can get into their my charts and see mm -hmm. what's going on. And I looked at his lab work and his liver function studies were up. So I called him and I said, what's up with this? Did the, what did the doctor say about your liver functions? And he said, well, she didn't say anything. And I said, it's the statin. Mm -hmm. It works on your liver. That's how it acts. And I said, your liver functions are up because as a result of taking that statin, Mm -hmm. Now, his doctor should have known that, but, but did the doctor say anything? No. Mm -hmm. So I told him to stop taking it. Now, he's a free American, and he can do what he wants to do with that, mm -hmm. but that's causing his liver functions to go up, and the doctors don't even pay attention to that. They don't correlate a symptom with a medication that you might be taking or anything like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, take the time. You can look up drugs yourself. I mean, my gosh, you've seen the ads on TV mm -hmm. where they talk for 
thir three minutes about all the side effects uh -huh. and the horrible things that can happen to you from taking the drugs. So I just believe in being educated about what you do. I mean, I was in traditional medicine for 40 years of my life because I worked for a doctor for 10 mm -hmm. before I went to nursing school. And I drank the Kool-Aid for years. Mm -hmm. I preached all that stuff for years. I gave my diabetic patients apple juice and pancakes with sugar-free syrup <laughs> for years. Mm -hmm. And would I do that again? Not, in, not on your life. Mm -hmm. But it was a process for me. It was an awakening for me. And, um, and now that's where I live. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will come ask me things and I'll say, you probably don't want to have this discussion <laughs> with me. <laughs> You probably want to talk, don't want to talk to me about this. <laughs> but I think it's a great example of the power of food. It is. Um, the power of food and taking ownership for your life. Right. Uh, I think so many times we pass that ownership on to other people right. um, to take care of us, to fix our problems. Um, yes, we can get their advice, get their help as needed, but it ultimately comes down to our, we're in charge of what goes into our mouth. The doctor's not going to put the food in your mouth. Um, we're 100 percent responsible for that. Exactly right. Exactly. And, right. and finding that ownership and saying this works for me. It may not work for everybody, um, or it may work for a lot of the population. Whatever it is, you have to craft what works for you. Right. And it's not a one size fits all plan. It is not a one size. Um, just like the dairy. Yeah. A lot of people can have the dairy, but because you and Rick had narrowed your things down, you you knew you took out dairy and that was it. Whereas when you have this big variety of diet, you're like, I have no idea what's causing the issues. Right. right. So, um, and without keto and without knowing that, you wouldn't be able to cut that out and those problems start to right. go away. And I really want to emphasize again that I am not telling everybody that this is the thing that they have to do because you're right, it's very individual. Mm -hmm. You know, you might just find there are certain things you can cut processed food out of your diet mm -hmm. and feel better. And that's good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to, we went a little extreme maybe and a lot of people think we're totally crazy. <laughs> But I know that it works. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know how I feel in my body, and I know how he says he feels in his body. And for us, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And when I can then have measures of how we've done as far as lab work is concerned and things like that, when I can look at the data, because I'm a geek about mm -hmm. that, when I can look at the data and I can see the improvement, then that's what's important to me, mm -hmm. is that I, that is good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't, nobody else has to tell me that. I know that. Mm -hmm. And it takes work and it takes time. And a lot of people don't think they have the time. But your health, you know, once it's gone, especially you lose your kidneys and you're on dialysis, mm -hmm. once that's gone, you're not going to get that back. Mm -hmm. So the time is when things start to happen. And you, everybody, I have never talked to one person that didn't have that little niggle in their brain that said, maybe I should look at the things that I'm eating. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and there's all there's always room to improve, no matter what your financial circumstance. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to eat organic, grass fed, grass finished, mm -hmm. but there are lots of things that you can do to make yourself healthier. And I think that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. um, what can I do better? I think ask every day. What mm -hmm. can I do better in food? Mm -hmm. What can I do better in exercise? Uh -huh. and, and, it, and it just progressively over time gets better if we continue to like, ask ourselves the questions of, and, and I know your process has gotten even more refined and better from when you started. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's getting better and better and better because you know what to do, you know how to refine it. It just works better. Right. Um, so it looks a lot different probably than it did 10 months ago. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. 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 And, and you, and you can manage it better and you don't have to take all the numbers because you know, now you know that process. Right. And right. I know that the numbers just frustrate me. Mm -hmm. and, and you, and you know, for you that you can get, you know, addicted to those numbers and I need to see those and I need to see them every day. And, and so for you, you know, I can't do that every day. I might yeah. check in with it every now and then, but I, I can't do it every day. Well, and the other thing that happens too, because Rick and I are doing this together, is that if his numbers are better than mine, that just flies all over me. <laughs> that makes me so mad. And I think, God, what am I doing wrong? But you know, people are just different. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, one of the things that we talk about in our academy all the time on our calls is that everybody start. you know, social media is a powerful mm -hmm. presence and everybody starts comparing themselves to everybody else. And we're all at a different place in our journey. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important mm -hmm. is that you recognize that, that you can't be like Joe Blow. I can't be like Rick with my mm -hmm. lab work, uh, but I, I know how much better I feel. Mm -hmm. And I know how much better uh, right, I rode the first time 
you know, the other day that since I started this, I tried to write immediately and I couldn't do it. I didn't mm -hmm. have enough, I wasn't adapted to this yet. Uh, but I wrote the other day and I felt great. My legs didn't hurt and that never happens. The mm -hmm. first few conditioning rides of the year, uh, but I got off the bike and my legs weren't killing me. I never had cramps in my legs. So, you know, once you realize that you've kind of, look at the progress that you've made, you don't ever want to go back again. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, I'll hear people say sometimes, well, I can't have that. I, I, I say I choose to eat this way. Mm -hmm. I, I never you're choosing a lifestyle. Yeah, and I don't look at it as being deprived of something. Mm -hmm. I look at it as I'm taking control of this, and I'm going to manage it the best way that I know how. And for me, it's not that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, and that's a decision everybody has to make. Mm -hmm. I choose this, and this is the lifestyle I want. Right. And, exactly. And then right. own it. Right. So. Right. But thank you, Deb, for spending a little time with me and sharing sharing your story with us. Of, um, and your journey and, and how far it has brought you um, and what joy it's brought you. Right. And what increased and in quality of life into your retirement. Right. Um, when really on the verge of um, not having the retirement you had worked so hard for. That's exactly right. Um, and now you're enjoying from that, enjoying now the retirement life that you always wanted. Yeah. So thanks and for asking me. I appreciate it. You're that. welcome. You're okay. welcome. So thank you. Yeah. And thank you for each of you for stopping by um, and joining us today. As I tell my wife, came every night before I go to bed, bomb of the night, double A, out.